Hello everybody, <coughs> myself Apurbo Roy and I am going to present a topics on a simplified optimal parentalization scheme using 2 tree for matrix chain multiplication. <coughs> Nowadays we know in many real life problems that we are facing day to day life are going to be represent in graph theory and thereby matrix representation. And to solve those problem, often we need to multiply those matrix and that matrix not only involve only uh, true, but in some cases we have to multiply a series of matrix that is uh, A1, A2, A3, A4 like that a series of matrix is there and that we have to multiply. And as you know that uh, matrix multiplication is a complex operation, it involves so much time and space. So, to get that problem, whenever we are multiplying a series of matrix, it is it is demanded an efficient matrix multiplication scheme. And as you know, if we consider A into A and B to matrix with dimension M into N and N into P, as a result of that, the resultant matrix C will be of dimension M into P and to get that C matrix, we have to perform N into M into P number of scalar operation. And instead of these two A and B matrix, if we have a series of matrix A1, A2, A3, A4 like that, the number of scalar multiplication will vary a lot. Not only that, that also depends on the sequence in which we are performing. Say for example, if we have A1, A2, A3, 3 matrix and we want to get that product, we have two alternatives. At first, we can multiply A1 and A2 first, then with that we can multiply to A3 or we can multiply A2 and A3 first and that you can multiply it with A1. In the same way, if we have A1, A2, A3, A4, these four matrices, we may get five possibilities. Now, when you are considering these different alternative for finding out the matrix product, see how that actually depends in our efficiency. Let us consider A and B and C are the three matrix with dimension 15 into 200, 220 and 20 into 50. If we do that A into B first and then we multiply that with C we will have totally 75,000 of scalar multiplication whereas if we multiply B C first and then we multiply it with A we will have 230,000 of scalar multiplication. So we noticed that efficiency greatly depends on the sequence of multiplications. So that is why whenever we are finding out any real life problem and that involves a series of multiplication matrix multiplication we need to find out the optimal sequence of the matrices that we should follow in order to give the better performance and in that regard we may remember that matrix multiplication is associative in nature but that is not commutative that means we cannot reorder the matrices that is sequence of a i a j that cannot interchange. So, to get a better solution, we can follow the dynamic programming approach. And in the dynamic programming approach, what we do? We actually find out the optimal sequence of matrix multiplication by finding out a substructure solution, optimal substructure solution. That means, instead of finding out the optimal sequence parenthesization on the matrices 1 to n. Let us try to find out the sequence within i to j and that will be recursively applicable to the matrices from 1 to n. Now, in the, if you want to do that, that if you want to find out the optimal sequence that how that can be done. So, that actually involves breaking that sequence A1, A2 up to A n into a position say 
in k position where k varies within 1 to less than n. So, if we split that a 1 to a, a 1 to a n matrix in the position k, so what you can do? We can find out a optimum, so we can find out the matrix multiplication within a 1 to a k, we can find the matrix multiplication a k plus 1 to a n and then these two we can multiply. Okay, so instead of finding out the optimal chain within 1 to n, now our problem comes finding out the optimal sequence in 1 to k and in k plus 1 to n and once you can do that, we can multiply these two to get the original one and whenever I are going to find out this 1 to k or k plus 1 to n, we can use the same thing in a recursive way. Now to do that, we notationally we represent one a i dot dot j that means we are multiplying the matrices a i to a j and that means so within this i to j we have to find out a number k that k within i to j and a i j may be written as a i into a plus a plus one dot 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 up to a k with that a k plus one to a k plus two dot 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 to a j and once we get these two with that we have to find out the time required to multiply these two matrix and that will be equal to p i minus 1 into p k into p j where p i minus 1 and p k is the dimension of matrix a k. So, optimally you can find out that m i j that is cos 2 multiply matrix i to j is equal to m i k that is cost of matrix multiplication from i to k then with that we have to add m k plus 1 j that is cost for time to multiply matrix a k plus 1 to j and with that we have to consider the scalar time required to multiply these two matrix and that will be equal to p i minus 1 into p k into p j. In that regard we have to notice that m i i is equal to 0 that is there is no need to or there is no scalar operation involved in that. So, that whatever we are doing this uh, simplification or splitting the uh, product of a 1 to a n into a i to a k then a k plus 1 to a j that we are doing in a algorithmic form. So, what we will do here we can multiply this k from i to j minus 1 and for each variation of i we will get the minimum value of this cost m i j. Initially we have initialized m i j is equal to infinite. Now, once we get a minimum value or less value than that, we will store that. So, if that loop varies, ultimately we will get the minimum value for this m i j. Now, whenever we are getting that minimum value, we are storing the value of k that is index for which we are getting this minimum value that we are storing in a separate array s. So, that S array will tell us in what sequence we will follow the breakup and M i j actually stores the cost of multiplying. So, M i j equal to Q means if we want to multiply matrix A i to A j we require a cost of Q and S i j equal to K means if we want to multiply a i to a j optimally, we have to split it at the position k. So, we will get a matrix S and matrix m i j and remember that this S i j which should be present in upper half of the matrix. <coughs> now, once we get this S, now what we need? We need to parenthesize those a i to a j or in general a 1 to a n and for that what you can do? We can use a uh, two tree construction algorithms. 
and in that algorithm is what we have just obtained in a previous algorithm is taken as an input and with that we have taken n so we initialize the first root and in that first root what we consider we consider the value of k and whatever the value of k accordingly we have split it so left child will be your from i to k that is from 1 to k and right child will be your k plus 1 to j that is k plus 1 to n and that way that will be recursively called and we will be able to get the 2 tree 1 now once we get this 2 tree next we will be able to use that 2 tree for parenthesis and scale and that can be done in that way so the whatever the 2 tree you have got that will be labeled with the matrix mi in general and that 2 t will be labeled with this all mi and parenthesization will be done from the uh, bottom uh, to top order that is whatever the bottom most uh, i mean uh, matrices are there they will be parenthesized first next upper half next upper half that way so that diagram actually shows that as a and b is what present in the bottommost position so they will be parenthesized and after that that will be multiplied with c and that way it actually goes on now once we have obtained this uh, matrix multiplication scheme that will help us to get the optimal sequence of way that how we will be able to do that now let's see that why this uh, matrix multiplication may be uh, necessary for that let us consider that we want a weather forecasting mechanism and for simplicity let us consider weather may be cloudy that is represented by c it may be sunny which is represented by s and it may be a rainy day and which is represented by r now based on the today's condition we have a forecasting of tomorrow and that are given in this matrix so in that case if we consider say row s and column r that is equal to 0 0.10 its meaning is that if today is sunny there is a 10 percent probability that tomorrow will be a rainy day and that way the other terms are also defined now if we with that if we consider that we want to forecast the weather of two days future four days future eight days future what you can do we will be able to perform the matrix multiplication scheme so if we want to uh, forecast weather after two days we will be able to, we have to multiply w square that is w into w so it is a sequence of series multiplication if we want to forecast result after 5 days we have to compute w5 w to the power 5 that is w into w into w into w into w that way so that means in general if we want to forecast the weather after 5 days we have to compute w to the power 5 and that is nothing but a uh, series of matrix multiplication and as you have noticed that in this multiplication whatever the result we have obtained here in the same way so you see in row s and in column r we have got 0 0.22 and that we have got in the computation of w square it's significant is that if today is your sunny after <coughs> two days you will get a rainy day with a probability of 22 percent in the same way if we have s row s column that gives 0 0.44 its significance is that we will get 44 percent probability <coughs> of a sunny if after two days if two days again sunny and that way we will be able to do so that is the application of matrix multiplication scheme and these are the references that i had used Thank you.